In our previous videos of dental anatomy, we have dealt in detail about the anatomy of maxillary central incisor and maxillary lateral incisor. Continuing with the series of dental anatomy videos, in this video we will be dealing in detail about the anatomy of permanent mandibular central incisor. Watch the video till the end to understand it well. Hi, we at Dentorize welcome you all to a platform where we help you to conceptualize, visualize and memorize dentistry. The permanent mandibular central incisors are two in number, centered in the mandible, one on either side of the medial line with mesial surface of one tooth in contact with the mesial surface of the another tooth. According to the FDI tooth notation system, the right permanent mandibular central incisor is numbered as 41 and the left permanent mandibular central incisor is numbered as 31. Following the similar approach as we followed in the maxillary incisors, we will be dealing with the anatomy of permanent mandibular central incisors under five headings. These are the labial aspect, the lingual aspect, the mesial aspect, the distal aspect and the incisal aspect. Starting our discussion with the first aspect that is the labial aspect, considering the first heading under the labial aspect that is the dimensions. The cervical incisal dimension that is the dimension from the incisal ridge to the lowest point on the cervical line for a permanent mandibular central incisor is 9.5 mm. The root length as measured from the lowest point on the cervical line till the root apex is 12.5 mm. The next dimension that can be measured from the labial aspect is the mesodistal dimension. The mesodistal dimension as measured from the contact areas present in the incisal third for both the mesial and distal outlines is 5 mm. The mesodistal dimension as measured from the cervix that is the cervical line is 3.5 mm. As we can observe from these dimension, this tooth is narrower as compared to the other teeth we have discussed so far. The next heading under the labial aspect is the crown surface of a permanent mandibular central incisor. As we can observe in the figure, the incisal third for a permanent mandibular central incisor is flat while the middle third of this tooth is convex. Starting with the next heading under the labial aspect of permanent mandibular central incisors that is the outlines of the tooth. Unlike the maxillary incisors in which significant differences were present between the mesial and the distal outlines, Similarities are present between the mesial and distal outlines of permanent mandibular central incisor. Let's see how. The mesioincisal angle for the permanent mandibular central incisor is sharp and so is the distoincisal angle. This is in contrast with that of the maxillary incisors wherein the mesioincisal angle was sharper in comparison to the distoincisal angle which was much more rounded. The crest of curvature or the contact point for a permanent mandibular central incisor is present incisor to the junction of incisal and middle thirds of the crown that is in the incisal third of the crown. If you are not clear with what an incisal and middle third is, please do check out our video on division of tooth into thirds. If we see the outlines of both the crown and the root, we observe as shown in the figure both the crown and the root tapers as it reaches the apex of the root. On observing the incisal outline we would note that the incisal outline of a permanent mandibular central incisor is straight and is present at right angles to the long axis of the tooth as shown in the figure. On observing the root we would note that the root tapers as it moves apically then takes a turn in the distal direction to end up in a pointed apex. Let's start with the next aspect of a permanent mandibular central incisor that is the lingual aspect which faces towards the tongue. Studying the lingual aspect of permanent mandibular central incisor in the similar manner as we studied the lingual aspect of maxillary incisors, keeping the explorer at the cervical area and then moving incisally, we would first of all observe a smooth convexity. This convexity is that of cingulum. On comparing the cingulum of permanent mandibular central incisor with that of the maxillary incisors, we observe that the cingulum of the maxillary central incisor was prominent. Cingulum of maxillary lateral incisor was more prominent as compared to the central incisor. However, the cingulum of mandibular central incisor is less prominent as compared to the maxillary counterparts. Then, 
in the mandibular central incisor as we move more incisally from the cingulum area we observe an area of flatness initially and then as we move more incisally this flatness becomes concave this overall area of flatness and concavity is the lingual fossa the lingual fossa for a permanent maxillary central incisor was concave but the concavity was more pronounced in a permanent maxillary lateral incisor in a permanent mandibular central incisor as we move towards the margins from the lingual fossa on the mesial and the distal side we observe that both the mesial and the distal marginal ridges are inconspicuous this is in contrast to the maxillary incisors wherein the mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge could be well observed one characteristic feature that can be observed in the lingual aspect of a permanent mandibular central incisor is that no developmental lines mark the cingulum development on this tooth at the cervical third implying that developmental grooves are not present in the cingulum area of this tooth this is in contrast to other teeth where many developmental lines varying in number are present on lingual aspect this is characteristic because no other tooth in the mouth except mandibular lateral incisor shows so few developmental lines and grooves on the lingual aspect coming to the next heading in the anatomy of permanent mandibular central incisors that is the mesial aspect considering the first heading that is the labiolingual dimension the labiolingual dimension as measured from the crest of curvature on both the labial and the lingual outlines as seen from this aspect is 6 mm the labiolingual outlines in the cervical area is 5.3 mm considering the next heading under the mesial aspect that is the outlines of the tooth as observed from the mesial aspect focusing first on the labial outline the crest of curvature on the labial outline as seen from the mesial aspect is present in the cervical third as represented by green dot now keeping our focus on the labial outlines please keep your eyes on the black arrows starting from the cervical line till the crest of curvature the line or the arrow is relatively straight as we move from the crest of curvature this line slopes till we reach the incisal ridge now considering the lingual outline of the crown if we start again from the cervical line we first of all observe a smooth convexity of the cingulum as represented by blue line then right after the cingulum there is a straight line which is inclined in the labial direction after that moving incisally we have a concave outline of the lingual fossa as represented in green as soon as the lingual fossa end there is a rounded outline of the linguo incisal ridge please observe the figure very carefully on observing the labial and the lingual outlines of the root as seen from this aspect starting from the cervical line and moving down apically we observe that the root outline is straight till part of middle third of the root please observe the black arrows as shown in the figure after this part of middle third the root on both the labial and the lingual sides start tapering down till it reaches the apical third please observe the purple arrows as shown in the figure the cervical line as seen from the mesial aspect has a curvature incisally the extent of curvature is approximately equal to 1/3 of the length of the crown the apex of the root is bluntly rounded or sometimes the apex may be pointed as well if we talk about the surface of tooth as observed from the mesial aspect we would find that the incisal third is convex and smooth till the crest of curvature or the contact point after this crest of curvature or contact point in the middle third of the crown we would find that the surface is broad and flat this broadness and flatness turns into concavity when we reach the cervical third of the crown if we reach the root we would find that the root surface is flat below the cervical line also broad developmental depression is present on entire surface of the root however the depth of this depression is greater at the junction of middle and apical third let's discuss about the next aspect of permanent mandibular central incisor that is the distal aspect on comparing the distal aspect with that of the mesial aspect there is just one major difference the developmental depression present on the root on the distal aspect of a permanent mandibular central incisor is more marked 
as compared to the depression present on the mesial aspect. Also, a more well-defined developmental groove is present in the center of this depression on the distal aspect as compared to that of the mesial aspect. If we talk about the curvature of cervical line, the extent of curvature on both the mesial and distal aspects is similar. Starting with the last aspect of permanent mandibular central incisor that is the incisal aspect. If we overall observe the surface of the tooth, we would observe that the labial surface is more visible as compared to that of the lingual surface. In the labial surface specifically, if we concentrate on the incisal third of the crown, we would observe that the surface is broad and flat. However, if we move cervically on the labial surface, there is a tendency towards convexity. If we observe the lingual surface on the incisal third, we would observe that the surface is concave. However, in the cervical third, a convexity of cingulum is present. Please observe the figure very carefully. After observing the labial and lingual surface as seen from the incisal aspect, let's put our attention on the incisal ridge. This is a very important point because this point differentiates mandibular central incisor from that of mandibular lateral incisor. The incisal ridge of a permanent mandibular central incisor is present at right angles to the line bisecting the crown labiolingually. Please observe the figure very carefully. Also, if you observe, we find that the labiolingual dimension of a permanent mandibular central incisor as measured from the incisal aspect is greater in comparison to the mesodistal dimension. Even in the labiolingual dimension, the labial dimension is greater in comparison to that of the lingual dimension. So, this was all about the anatomy of a permanent mandibular central incisor. This tooth can also be summarized in a similar manner we summarize the permanent maxillary central incisor in the similar headings. Please do check out that video, make your own notes for this tooth and you can even share your notes with us so that we can have a look and tell you the areas of improvement. If you like our content, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we upload a new video. Suggestions are always welcome from your side. Stay tuned, stay safe. Thank you for watching.